Welcome to Kaleidoscope Toy and Miniature Australian Shepherds. Today is day three of stay training with Yeti. Yeti's been here three days and he's had two training sessions and both of them were shown in real time in part one and part two. But first of all, I have got to give a shout out to my puppy from my Easter litter, Cadbury. He's now known as Oliver. Oliver and his family made this shirt for me, sent this shirt to me, and it has my mantra on it, and on the back it has my website and whatnot. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I've said it before, I have the best puppy adopters in the world. All right, we're gonna get right to it, but I wanna answer a couple of questions that I had. Uh, so it was some confusion about wait and stay. And when I, when I ask a dog to stay, I'm going to, well, I'll demonstrate it for you. Come here. Sit. Good. Stay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the dog and I'm going to physically touch the dog and grab the dog's collar. And the reason for that is it's a safety issue. Let's say that I see my dog getting ready to get in danger and I tell it to stay it's, and it stays and I can walk over and get it by the collar. I also want to touch the dog's collar every single time I call the dog stay. Touch the dog, touch the collar. Reward the dog while you're holding the collar. Okay, that would be stay. Now I've never done weight with this dog, but I'll give it a try. All right, I'm going to take off his leash. And what I would do is I would say, wait. Yeti, come. Yeti, come. Good boy. Good. And I'm going to touch his collar. Yay. Good boy. Yay. And that would be the difference between wait and stay. Now, you don't have to call the dog to you to come. You can release the dog. You can say okay or free or whatever your word is out of the weight. But for me, when I say stay, ah, stay. See, this is why I don't train both of them at the same time. Stay. I'm going to come back and touch the dog. I'm going to grab the dog by the collar. And that's why I train. I train stay first and I train I train stay first and then I train wait later because you don't, if you train both of them at the same time, you can see it creates confusion. But I just wanted to show you the difference. So Yeti's coming along nicely. He was also not real good at following me on the leash, so I've been working on that. Come on, let's go. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Yay. So you can see we're getting a lot better with that. Um, and I, <laughs> I literally did that for like two minutes before we started recording. I did it for two minutes. So really dog training is about communicating clearly and being really consistent and evaluating each dog as an individual and finding out how that dog learns. Now this dog is so food motivated that <laughs> there's no way I would use food with this dog because all he can think about is food. It was so wet out here, I thought, well, I'll teach him a place command really quick, uh, and he can get up on an elevated surface and get off this wet grass. And with place command, I do, I flip treats on it, let him get on and off of it, because it's a little scary. This dog loses his mind, <laughs> I found out, <laughs> if you bring out the food. So I would never train this dog with food, because that's all he can think about. But I'm gonna show you where we're at with the stay. Come here. This is actually the first time I've done it off leash. Good. 
good boy. And every single time I'm going to touch or grab this collar. Every time I call a dog, okay, free. Every time I call a dog to me, I'm gonna to touch the dog's collar. I'm gonna get away from him and see if I can call him. Yeti come. Yay, come here. Oh, what a good boy. You're the best. You're the best. And I've got him by the collar. Yay, okay, free. Good. So you've seen Yeti trained in real time. We started out with walk when I walk, stop when I stop. <laughs> And, and then I started the, the stay on the long line. I started the stay with staking it down. And then today is an off leash stay. Now, is he trained? Completely no, he is not. This is the very beginning stages, but he definitely has a good concept of it. So anytime you think that your dog is stupid, stubborn, whatever it is that you know, you're thinking, it's really the handler. And not to be harsh, but what we have to start thinking about is how am I not communicating clearly to my dog? Why can't I train this dog? What is it that I am doing wrong? And once you start looking at yourself and looking at your methods and looking at your, how inconsistent you are or how inconsistent your family is, then you're going to have some sympathy for the dog and you're going to start learning how to train the dog properly. So. I have to say that it's almost never the dog, almost never. If you have a dog maybe with a, was oxygen deprived during birth and has some learning disabilities or something, that's one thing. But mostly it's almost always, always the training and the trainer. So if you're, if you're with a trainer and you're not getting the results that you want, try to find a different method that works for both you and your dog. And thank you for sharing, following along with Yeti and his three day stay with us. And, uh, and, and uh, again, I really appreciate the subscriptions and the likes and the comments and have a wonderful summer day.